Chapter 5, Part 4 of Commentary on the Gospel of John, Book 5, by Cyril of Alexandria, translated by Rev. Philip Edward Pusey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 39. They answered and said unto him, Our father is Abraham. O great unlearning, and mind withered unto unbelief, and looking to only wrangling, for while our Saviour Christ consenteth, and saith openly, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, they persist in the same, and as though one were holding out and contradicting, and saying that they were not of Abraham's seed after the flesh, they again say, Our father is Abraham, and blush not going oft through the same words, who think that they ought not to yield even to Vatus, but are but most excellent emulators of that man's babbling. But perchance they had some most unreasoning plea for this, and what we will tell. For when the Lord says, I speak that which I have seen with my father, they did not imagine that he hereby intended God the Father, but thought that he spoke of either the righteous Joseph, or some other of those on the earth ridiculing and deeming and thinking exceeding little things of him for the holy virgin conceived in her womb the divine babe not of marriage but of the holy ghost as it is written and the blessed joseph knowing not at first the mode of the economy was minded to put her away privily as matthew saith but it was not by any means unknown by the jews that the holy virgin conceived in her womb before marriage and coming together yet they understood not that it was of the holy ghost but thought that she had been corrupted by one of the nation whence they had no right conceptions of christ for they deemed that he was a child begotten of some other father who had corrupted according to their madness the holy virgin and that he was attributed only to joseph being a bastard and not son in truth when then he says i speak that which i have seen of my father they took in no thought at all of god but that he meant some one of earthly fathers and fancied that he was trying to move them from their honour to their ancestor and suspecting that he was apportioning to his own kin the honour due to another and that most ancient glory of the patriarchate they meet him in a more contentious and vehement manner saying our father is abraham for just as though they were saying albeit sir you drench us with clever words and din around us with portentous marvels and strike us hard with mighty deeds beyond speech you will not remove us from our pristine boast we will not register thy father as the head of our race we will not attribute such a glory to another nor will we take new ancestors in exchange for the elder ones it is no marvel nor hard to believe that the jews should fall into such folly when they imagined that he is even a bare man and in manifold wise holding him cheap would call him the carpenter's son and rank as though not the king and lord of all but that they had no right opinion as to the holy virgin also as though she had been denied we shall know full well by what follows forty jesus saith unto them if ye were abraham's children ye would do the works of abraham but now ye seek to kill me a man that have told you the truth which i heard of god this did not abraham soothing so to say by every way and word the boldness of the jews christ speaks to them veiledly not applying open conviction but mingled with gentle speech and in lowly wise and manifoldly charming their wrath for since he sees that they are most exceeding silly and understand not of what is said he makes his discourse free at length from any veil and bared of all covering for it needed he says it needed if ye believed that being classed among abraham's children was the highest honour 
that ye should be zealous to imitate his manners it needed that ye should track the lovely virtue of your ancestor it needed that ye should be zealous of and love his obedience for he heard god say get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land that i will show thee and not delaying in the fulfilment of what was bidden him he hastens forthwith from his country and relying on the mercy of him who bade him arrives in a foreign land and being at the very goal so to speak of life and passing his hundredth year he heard thou shalt have a seed and nothing doubting he gave fervent faith to him that spake heeding not the weakness of his flesh but looking at the strength of him that spoke to him he heard that he was to offer to god his beloved for a sacrifice and forthwith he strove against the longings of nature and made his love for the youth second to the divine command in you i find all contrary to these for ye are seeking he says to kill me because i have told you things from god this did not abraham for he insulted not by his unbelief him who spake to him he sought not to do anything that grieved him how then are ye any more abraham's children being as far distant from his piety as the difference of your actions shows but observe how he arranges his speech for he said not that they heard the truth from the father but from god since as we just now said from their innate unbounded folly they were dragged down to untrue conceptions of him thinking that he was speaking of some one of earthly fathers and exceeding well does he make his discourse about dying call himself man in every way retaining to himself incorruptibility as god by nature yet not severing from himself his own temple but as being one son even when he became man yet says that he spake the truth for not in types any more and figures does the saviour's word teach us to practise piety but persuades us to love the spiritual and true worship but when he says which i heard from the father we must by no means be offended for since he says that he is man he speaks this too as befits man for as he is said as man to die let him be said as man to hear also but it seems likely that in the word heard he puts the inherent knowledge which he has of the will of his own progenitor for so is the want of the divinely inspired scripture oftentimes to say of god for when it says and the lord heard we do not by any means attribute to him a separate and distinct sense of hearing like as there is in us for the divine nature is simple and remote from all compound but we take rather hearing as knowledge and knowledge as hearing for in the simple there is not compound as we have said and to these meanings we will add a third not departing from fit aim god the father said somewhere of christ to the most holy moses a prophet will i raise them up that is to say to them of israel from among their brethren like unto thee and i will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him for this reason therefore did our lord jesus christ say that he heard from the father the truth and spake it to the jews at once convicting them of fighting against god the father and showing clearly that himself is he whom the lawgiver promised before to raise up to them forty one ye do the deeds of your father having shown that the jews are utterly of other manner than their ancestor and far removed from his piety he with good reason strips them of their empty fleshly boast 
and saying openly that they ought not any longer to be enrolled among his children he allots them to another father like unto them and a fixed similitude of deeds as a sort of bond of kindred teaching that the good ought to be joined to the good and deciding that it is meet that they who live ill should have as fathers those who have been condemned for the like for like as they who have chosen to live excellently and are therefore even now called saints may without hazard call god their father so to the wicked is the wicked one rightly ascribed as father seeing that they form the image of his wickedness and perversity in their characters for not altogether is he who begot of himself conceived of as father by the divine scripture but he too who has any conformed to his own character of whom he is said to be therefore father thus does the divine paul too write to certain for in christ jesus through the gospel did i beget you as then as we said some are conformed both to god and to the holy fathers through likeness in manners and holiness so to the devil too and to those like in conduct to him are some rendered like-minded suffering this through their own depravity therefore to the saint the saints are fathers but to the wicked the wicked who betake themselves to them most befittingly and the one who in holiness take the impression so to say of the divine form on their own souls and have the confidence that befits own sons will with reason say our father which art in heaven the bad again will be ascribed to their own father begotten as it were through likeness unto him unto equal depravity with him to the jews therefore christ allots and names another father than the holy abraham and who he does not as yet clearly say they said therefore to him we have not been born of fornication we have one father god already now have i said that the all-daring jews were easily sick with bitter and unholy conceptions of our saviour christ for they thought that the holy virgin had been corrupted i mean the lord's mother and that she was taken with child not of the holy ghost or of operation from above but of one of those on the earth for being wholly disbelieving and without understanding they either made no account of the prophetic writings albeit openly hearing behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son or looking only to the flesh and following the order of events usual with us and not thinking of the nature which works beyond speech to which naught is hard to perform every thing that seems good to him easy they deem that no otherwise could a woman conceive in her womb save by coming together with her husband and cohabitation sick of such a suspicion the wretched ones dare to accuse the birth through the spirit of the divine and wondrous offspring but when putting them forth from kindred with abraham he allots them to another father very angry are they and unrestrainedly foaming up their inherent anger they reviling say we have not been born of fornication we have one father god for they say darkly somewhat of this sort two fathers hast thou neither wert thou born of honourable marriage we one god but let a man see and consider clearly how great their disease of madness in this too for they who by reason of the naughtiness and depravity that was in them are by the righteous judge put not even among the children of abraham advanced to such a measure of madness as to call even god their father perhaps because of what is said in the books of moses israel is my son my first-born not admitting into their mind what is said through the voice of isaiah woe to the rebellious children saith the lord 
and one may reasonably inquire what it was that induced the jews at present to say no longer our father is abraham or we have one father abraham but to go straight up to one god to me they seem to have had some thought of this kind for when they smiting with their railing the lord as though his mother had been dishonoured before marriage were ascribing to him two fathers needs did they seek to take the title of one as an ally of their own ill-will for whereby they affirm that they have one father god by the same they indirectly reproach the lord of having two setting the one over against two for they imagined that if they said we have one father abraham they would be altogether denying the rest i mean isaac and jacob and the twelve who were from him which if they should do they would seem to be arming themselves against themselves and to fight with their own choice and boast estranging israel from the nobility of the fathers and thereby to go along with the lord's own saying escaping then the damage that thence seemed to accrue to them they no longer say we have one father abraham but rather ascribe to themselves one father god spell subdued by only the most unsure pleasures of railing that they might fall into yet greater blame craftsmen of all impiety yet daring to take as their father the enemy of all impiety forty two jesus said unto them if god were your father ye would love me for i proceeded forth from god and am come the lord does not hereby take away the power of any to be ranked among the sons of god but shows rather to whom will pertain the boast of it and that it will be found rather in the saints and convicts the insulting jew of being mad for i saith he am sprung the one and true son by nature from god the father that is and all are adopted formed after me and mounting up unto my glory for images are always after their archetypes how can ye then he says at all be numbered among the children of god who are minded not only not to love him who beamed forth from god and transfashions unto his own form those who believe on him but do even dishonour him not in one way but in many and they who receive not the image of god the father how will they be at all formed after him besides it is lawful he says not to any chance persons without blame to call god their father but those in whom the beauty of piety towards him shall flash forth those i deem and none other will it befit i have come from heaven to counsel you things most excellent and my word invites you to the being formed after god but if it be verily your aim and longing to have god as your father surely you would have loved me your guide and teacher on such a path who give you the opportunity of likeness to the one and true son who through the holy ghost render conform to himself those who receive him for he he says who altogether boasteth of ownness toward god how would he not love him that is of god how tell me will he honour the tree who foolishly loatheth the fruit that is its offspring either therefore he saith make the tree good and his fruit good or make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt if therefore the tree that is to say god the father be noble and ye know how to draw the splendour thereof on your own heads why loved ye not the fruit that is of him believing it to be such as he is the verse before us therefore hath at once a bitter reproof of the jews for it shows them to be liars for when they essay to call god their father they are far away from the virtue that pertains to those who are called to this because they love not him 
who is of god by nature and at the same time it profitably brings in the mention of his own ineffable generation that they might be caught in impiety in this too calling him ill-born and bastard for if the saying i proceeded forth from god signifies his ineffable and eternal generation from the father adding i am come he shows his appearance in this world with flesh and surely one will not say that god the word then first beamed forth from god the father when he became man for so it seemed to some of the unholy heretics but he will rather take it as is meet and will conceive of it piously for not because he joined the words i mean i proceeded forth and i am come will the word of the father be coeval in time with the birth of the flesh but to each of the things indicated will we keep its proper meaning for we believe the first generation of the word conceived of as from god to be without beginning and above mind wherefore it hath been set forth first in the words i proceed it forth from god the second that is to say that after the flesh for neither have i come of myself but he sent me i was incarnate as you that is i became man in the good pleasure of god the father came i in this world to declare to you the things of god and to tell to those who know not what it is that pleases him but ye loved not he says him who from the divine counsel was revealed to you as saviour and guide how then will ye any more be called children of god or how will ye gain the grace of ownness with him if ye honour not him that is of him it is likely that the lord again means something by this and aims by such words also to silence the people of the jews who are vainly yelping at him and what it is that is intended we will briefly say many among the jews esteeming no whit the divine fear but admiring and accepting only honours from men and overcome by base lucre dared to prophesy speaking out of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the lord as it is written and verily the lord of all himself chid them saying i sent not the prophets i spake not to them yet they prophesied yea he threatened to do dread things to them crying out woe unto them that prophesy out of their own heart and see nothing at all such an one was that shemaiah who to the words of jeremiah opposed his own lie and having taken the yokes of wood and shattered them said thus saith the lord i will shatter the yoke of the king of babylon since then when our saviour christ says but now ye seek to kill me a man who have told you the truth which i heard of god the jews began to murmur and not knowing who he is in truth to imagine that he is some false prophet and to be therefore hardened so as to even dare to revile him and so angrily desired to kill him as even to press on to do it profitably does he again terrify them saying that he came not of himself as was the want of them who prophesy falsely but was sent by god that by the same he both putting aside the reputation of being a false prophet and teaching that they will incur no slight doom who not only dishonour him that has been sent by god the father but also dare to devise murder against him might cut short their unbridled daring this then for what is before us but it is probable that the heretic will make what has been said the food of his innate impiety he will haply accuse the essence of the only begotten and will deem that it is in lower case than the father's because of his saying that he had been sent by him but let such an one consider the mode of the economy but now spoken 
and remember paul crying aloud of the son who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but emptied himself taking servant's form made in the likeness of men and found in fashion as a man he humbled himself made obedient unto death but if he hath of his own will humbled himself the father that is consenting and co-willing it what accusal will he have going through the whole mode of the economy unto its consummation in any reasonable way but if because of his saying that he has been sent you deem that the son lies in lower case than the father how tell me doth he that is in lower case according to thy unlearning work in all exactitude the things of god for where does the lesser show itself in him who possesses perfectly all that belongs to his own progenitor and the fullest god-befitting authority therefore he will not be conceived of as less on account of being sent but being god of god by nature and verily since himself is the wisdom and power of the father he is sent to us as from the sun the light which is spread abroad from it in order that he might make wise that which lacks wisdom and that thus at length that which was weak might be lifted up through him and strengthened unto the knowledge of god the father and recovered unto all virtue for all things most fair beamed on the human race through only christ there is therefore nothing at all of servile kind in christ but it belongs only to the form of the flesh but god befitting is his authority and power even all even though the language meetly conform to the measure of lowliness take human fashion forty three why do ye not understand my speech because ye cannot hear my word what we have oftentimes said we say again for profit to the readers for there is no harm in our discourse going very frequently through what may profit it is the custom then of our saviour christ not altogether to accept from those who disbelieve him the word that boiled up from their tongue but to look rather on the hearts and reins and to make his replies to the thoughts that were yet revolving in the depth of their hearts for man who knows not the thoughts that are in another will needs admit the uttered word but god not so for he knowing all things takes the thought for the voice when then the lord said to the jews that he had not come of himself like them who of their own mind and not of the divine spirit advanced to prophesy but that he was sent by god they again imagine or reason among themselves or secretly whispering one to another said many prophets have spoken the things of god and brought words from the spirit unto us but we find not among them of such sort as is in this man's words for he bears us wholly away from the worship after the law and removes us to some other polity and introduces to us a strange transition of life dissonant therefore manifestly and irreconcilable is his discourse with that of those of old since he beheld them thinking as is likely these things showing that he is by nature god and knoweth the counsels of the hearts he takes hold of it and says why do ye not understand my speech because ye cannot hear my word i am not ignorant he says that ye cannot comprehend my speech or doctrine but i will tell you the reason and will clearly set before you what is the hindrance ye cannot hear my word he says ye cannot convicting them of impotence unto perfect good because of their being foremastered by their passions for the love of pleasure unnerves the mind and the unbridled tendency toward evil yet weakening the sinew of the heart renders it feeble and most spiritless to the power of performing any virtue 
being therefore foreweakened by tendencies to vice and tyrannized by your own passions ye cannot he says hear my word for right are the ways of the lord as it is written and the just shall walk in them but the transgressors shall become impotent in them akin to this will you find that too which was in another place said to the pharisees how can ye believe which receive honour one of another and seek not the honour that cometh from the only god for verily in this their not being able to believe shows the voluntary weakness of their understanding or that their mind has been before overcome of vainglory and we find again that that is true of the jews which has been spoken by the voice of paul but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him since therefore they were natural they deemed that he was foolishness who was inviting them to be saved and was teaching them the path of an excellent conversation and directing them full well unto the power of pleasing god who delighteth in virtue to whom be all honour glory might for ever and ever amen end of chapter five end of commentary on the gospel of john book five by cyril of alexandria translated by rev philip edward pusey